Good morning, everybody. This is Van Hargis with Van Hargis Horsemanship. Um, let's take a trip over to the ranch real quick. Appreciate you guys joining me again today on the ranch road. Um, we're going to talk a little bit more today about contact. I know we've been talking about this for the last few videos. Um, I've gotten some great questions and some comments. I really appreciate you guys uh, commenting back to us and, and uh, inter inter engaging with us on this. Um, Today I'm gonna to visit, oops, I'm gonna put this seatbelt on. I've never seen a county police officer or anything on this road, but heck, you never know, right? Um, let's just set this up by saying this. We want, to, we, want the, um, we want the contact, like I said before, three major areas, right? Our seat first, our seat's kind of what starts everything. Our hands and our feet support that. So just look at your seat starts. In other words, it's, it's the place that creates the rhythm. And then your hands and your feet support that. When I say your feet, of course, I mean your legs. But your, your hands and your feet support what your seat is doing and what your seat is, is driving, so to speak. Um, one other area I want to kind of get you guys to think about in regard to that is... Um, Think of, think of this, that your, your seat sets everything else up and your hands control the front half, set up and control the front half. Uh, better, maybe even a better way to say it is to set up and guide the front half. Meanwhile, your legs and your seat set up and guide the back half of your horse. And the combination of the two gives your horse a very good instruction and idea as to what it is we're trying to achieve with them. Now, hopefully we'll all agree that all of the horse's energy comes to us from behind, right? So everything starts and stops with the big motor of the horse, which is in the hind end. That starts and stops. Everything that we do is from that back end. So imagine then, um, if you will, if our feet have a job of controlling the back half, I want you to think of your legs as if they are rocks or boulders on the banks of a river. And all that energy from behind, from that horse, is like that river, all that energy flowing under your seat and between your legs. When that horse is driving from behind and pushing forward, all that energy is going right between under your seat and right between your legs. Therefore, your legs help guide and set this horse up for success if we know more, more specifically what it is we're trying to achieve with our horses. So you see, all that energy comes from behind and our job is to help direct that energy with our hands and our legs. So we have to understand then that our legs job is to create not necessarily resistance, but a guideline. Now, here's something that I talked about many years ago with, with one of my mentors as we were talking one night about getting our horses lighter and more supple and more responsive to our legs. And he said to me, he said, well, if, man, if we can get a horse to move away from pressure, then why can't we get a horse just to move to where there is no pressure? And what we were referring to, of course, was with our legs. All right, so if we are guiding a horse and are riding one and riding one properly, and our legs are helping guide and support that horse, if we wanted the horse to say drift to the right, rather than putting more pressure on with the left leg, why would we just simply open the door with that right leg? You see, in other words, rather than forcing something with one side of our body, why not just simply open a door up with the other side? And honestly, when you do that, there's so many different things that take place. Remember, everything starts with your seat, right? So imagine then if you wanted the horse to drift to your right, and again, I'm just using this as, a, as an example, but I wanted the horse to drift to your right. If you're sitting in the saddle properly on your seat, on your seat bones, and you understand how that saddle sits on your horse's back, in other words, one bar of the saddle on one side, one bar of the saddle on the other side, when you take your right leg off, I'll kiss your big toe if you don't inadvertently have more weight now on your left hip, on your left seat bone. When you do, that saddle opens up ever so slightly to that right side. And when that happens, that horse feels now, hey, there's a door open. 
And then when you when that leg is off of that rib cage as well, now that horse feels that path of least resistance. You see, so now just imagine all that energy flowing from behind you. When you take that boulder out of the river, all that happens is the flow can drift that direction. I hope that helps you guys. And, and if nothing else, I just hope it plants some seeds and give you guys some things to think about. And uh, at any time, we wish you guys would come and ride with us down here at the Crossroads Ranch in Victoria, Texas. And, um, and, and let us go into more detail with you on this. And if you like more information about that, just go to our website. Or you can, of course, email us at info at As always, thank you guys for joining me on the Ranch Road. And until next time, this is Van Hargis with Van Hargis Horsemanship.